Welcome to Selling Secrets, our segment on my cool inventions. Here's where we reveal secrets. Here's where we reveal the top secrets of the business and the industry. Hopefully, you learn something to help propagate your, maybe your entrepreneur business. Maybe you're a lawyer. Maybe you're running a hardware store. Maybe you're an inventor, an entrepreneur. You want to sell stuff, right? Now, yep. we get into a lot of discussions about things like home shows and things like big trade shows, and we call it like markets, you know. Seems to me when we're talking to inventors, the word markets come up a lot, right? Right. So an inventor comes on. I, I want. I want. I want to. And I want to figure out. Al, give me an idea of a, a, an inventor who's been on who had a, a product that was really great, but the market was so. I remember one. I remember one. A guy comes on. A great invention. It's for diabetics that you can. Uh, you can. Uh, it's a sensitivity thing for your toes. Uh, is to see what the, the propagation of getting better or worse from your diabetes. Now that was a great invention, but it was a market that was really, really, really small. So I want to talk about how to divide your products into markets. Now, when you come to Andrew and I, when we're at a home show or something, we're on television, we want a product that is the next doorknob. A product that every, every, everybody wants. And like this, there's a doorknob right there. Thanks, Al. Well, we want to call this, we're going to call this market the huge mass market. Huge mass, meaning everybody has a door. Bars of soap. Bars That's of a soap. huge mass market. Everybody uses soap, right? Everybody has a doorknob. Let's surprise them. See what Al comes up with next in the picture if he's got one there on there. So mass, huge mass market items are really successful. So I also talk about things like huge mass market items, especially if they have continuity behind them. For example, that bar of soap, you know that's not the only bar of soap you're ever gonna buy. That doorknob, ah, you might change the doorknob in your life two, three times, but um, <laughs> let me tell you something, a bar of soap, all the time. Laundry soap, huge mass market. One of our most successful products is called S2O Laundry Sheets. You know what I love about that product? Everybody has to do laundry, and they buy it over and over and over again, right? Now, my brother Andrew here, uh, he's got he's got a music store, yep. and you cater to uh, professional musicians. Correct. Would you call that a huge mass market? Not really. No, of course not, because it's not a doorknob. No. In fact, his market, he's not even what I call. Well, he would he would be in something called. It could be a mass market, uh, but it's a much smaller mass market. It's almost a niche market. It's almost a niche market. Almost a niche market. He sells guitars and pedals and keyboards. What else do you sell? Yeah, basses and drums and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, not everybody wants their... I mean, I wish everybody would put a kid in music lessons because I think that would be great if everybody played a musical instrument, but not everybody does. Right. So his store isn't a huge mass market. Let's talk about things that are mass markets, but a little bit niche, just like Andrew's store. Items like sports equipment, right? That's mass market. You know, you can go to the store, you can go to you know these big sports stores, they have them around, where you can buy sporting equipment, just like Andrew's musical instrument store. You can buy sporting equipment. It doesn't, that's not the huge mass market, but it would not, everybody in the family, there is this possibility that someone in every family would have use for a sporting equipment goods store, right? So it's mass market, but it's not huge mass market because not everybody needs it. But in every family, in every house, there's a chance that somebody would want that product. We call that the mass market, okay? That's different. And let me tell you another mass market item, uh, things like diamonds, okay? Things like, we had an inventor in here who had this veneer, it was a really cool idea, I should tell you about it. It's veneer diamonds, right? So what he does, he takes cubic zirconia right. and he puts a film, uh, he has, a, he has a, a way to put the film of diamond, a real film of diamonds, real diamonds on the outside. They use this technology when they're making uh, fighter jets, when they're making uh, a drill bits to go through rock. They have this technology to put a film of diamond on a surface and he took that technology and he put that film of diamond, for example, on a, uh, uh, on, on a, um, uh, a cubic zirconia. So now it has the sparkle of a diamond but really Really isn't a diamond, so it's way cheaper. Well, diamonds again that falls into the category of um, is it a huge mass market like a doorknob? No, but in every single home, I bet you you'd find a diamond. Right. Maybe the wife has it. Maybe the you know, you've got one in your ear. I think don't you know? No. You got a rude look today. Mm -hmm. I, you know, we never know. But there's a chance that someone in the house could have a diamond. We call that mass market, but not huge mass market. Hold on, Dar Dar Darcel says the one the world the world's one and only product that keeps your razor sharp. The effing use the razor beds. Hey, listen, Dara Daryl, I think you're on Inventor Showdown. Razor bed, get in touch with Bonnie right away. We've been trying to get a hold of you. Uh, we got, we got to make, like, make sure Bo Bo Bonnie's talking to you because Daryl has a product called Razor Beds. Now, let me ask you a question. Is Razor Beds just a huge mass market or is it just regular mass market? 
I think it's it's probably in the mass market. I wouldn't say. I mean, everybody has blades. Say, I, I would I would say it's a huge mass market. Because I mean, you know why? Because many people in a house would have a you know. But you're right. It's kind of the middle. It's but kind of like in the middle. Kind of in the middle. But everybody would use a razor. And this razor beds. How would you like to use your razor longer where it doesn't get dull faster? Because what well, you trouble is these things are fortune razors. And so he's got a product uh, that's called Razor Beds. They razorbed.com. You don't have to throw out your razor because he has a way to keep the razor dry so it doesn't oxidize, doesn't rust, so it keeps sharp or longer, which is really cool. And I love this product. I love this product. In fact, he's on the board right now to be an inventor showdown season two in August. Bonnie's trying to get a hold of him, get the QA samples in. I think he might even win inventor showdown. And if he goes in front of 90 million homes and wins, let me tell you something, uh, that guy might uh, be hugely successful. He'll really All right. win. <laughs> so we talked about huge mass market. That's a good market. Mass market. That's a good market. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about uh, niche markets. Okay. Mm. We had a guy here on the program uh, who had uh, a dart sharpener. Okay. You know when you're playing darts? Yeah. He had a dart sharpener. Now, well, that's a niche market. Yeah, you might find darts in some homes, you know, the game darts. Um, yeah, how many people who's play sharpening darts? their darts, yeah, right? Sharpening. Professionals might be sharpening their darts. I don't know. No. But, you know, I don't know. People who hunt with darts might be sharpening their darts. I have no <laughs> idea. But this is a dart, diamond dart sharpener. We had an inventor on a program. Now, that's a product the diamond dart sharpener that we would not put on live shopping. Because let me talk about, the reason I tied in uh, Daryl there with the razor bed is uh, uh, because I think in live shopping, the markets we like are these huge mass or mass markets. Like guitars have sold successfully in live shopping, right? Right. Uh, especially when you got a guy up there, who's that uh, Australian gu uh, guy, famous musician up there. Uh, we've had all kinds of famous musicians on there selling guitars, right? Okay. On there. Um, uh, so mass market, a huge mass is what I call live shopping products. Now, dart sharpeners, yeah, not so much. However, there could be a, a good market for it uh, in a specialty market, like maybe a dart sharpener, you go into a specialty dart store, that might be a market there for dart sharpeners. Might be an upsell. An upsell. Oh, that's you know, a good idea. Yes. Somebody's buying darts, you might want to... Yeah, yeah, good, give them, good idea. Give them an upsell. upsell. Uh, we had another product on, Andrew, it was really cool, it's called a 3D ruler. Take a okay. look at this. So this is a ruler that's not just a regular ruler, but it also measures in three dimensions. Now, this is important when you're drilling down into a piece of wood don't want to come out the other side yep. and there's all kinds of good reasons to have a 3d ruler but you know would i put that in a home depot probably not yeah you know it's hard however a contractor who's always got these sort of specialty problems that might be a good thing to have in his bag of tricks there yeah the and he might pull it out maybe once a month right but that's a real niche market so so far we've covered huge mass markets and regular mass markets and those two categories where i love inventions i love inventions in those two categories mm -hmm. especially Especially if you bring me one in the huge mass market, like Daryl there with the razor bed. He's been commenting, and good to see you there, Daryl. And if you're uh, one of our inventors, comment. Come on, ask questions. Comment way right there. The selling secret. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about in the marketing thing is called novelty markets. Now, novelty markets are really interesting because you think novelty markets are not going to be the mass market, but sometimes they are. Yeah. For example, now you don't look old enough. I don't know who remembers. Who remembers? Everybody watching, um, comment on Facebook. Who remembers the pet rock? Remember the pet rock? This genius came up. He throws a round rock and a bunch of straw in a box, and he gives it a name. I don't know what the heck he gave it. All kinds of ownership papers. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody went out there buying a rock in a box, right? And let me tell you something. It was massively successful. But that would be like a novelty market. A novelty yeah. market. Uh, I mean, uh, what other what other products, for example, do you think are novelty markets like that? With Chia Pet, maybe. Chia Pet is probably. Chia one. Pet would be a novelty market. How successful is Chia Pet? Seriously, I mean that's that's basically a, a pumice rock with seeds in it. <laughs> well, I, don't know. I can only imagine those guys throw some water on it. They started making uh, the chia pets in different heads, and then I think you can buy a, a Donald Trump chia pet. I think you can buy a, 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 all kinds of chia <laughs> pet heads on there. So those are novelty markets. And let me tell you something: don't dis, don't um, get discouraged by novelty markets because they're massive. They, if they're if they hit right through, if you would have come to me and you said, "Hey, Andrew, here's what we're gonna do." I'm I mean, I don't know how much we'd have to be drinking uh, to come up with this idea. <laughs> okay. Look at that round rock over there. Okay, we're going to put that rock in a box, and we're going to sell it for 10 bucks. You might say, yeah. you lost your mind. <laughs> we're going to sell people rocks in boxes. But think about it. Who remembers Pet Rock? Do you all remember Pet Rock? Huge market. So the four markets that we want to break down for all the inventors out there, does your product 
Is your product a huge mass market? Is it like a doorknob or a bar of soap? Maybe I, I'll give you that picture again. Is that a market? Uh, is your market like uh, razor beds? I would consider, well, I'd give Daryl the benefit of the doubt. Maybe that's a mass market item. Is it just like a me- regular mass item? I actually think uh, Lindsay, uh, Lindsay, our inventor, we just had there with illuminated picture candle holder. Mm-hmm. That's a mass market, mass market, but it's not the huge mass because the mass market, you'll find candles in homes. You mm-hmm. will. I have a bunch in my house. No. Uh, you put a picture in front of it. Uh, that's kind of a that's kind of cool, right? Maybe it makes my candle better. So I call that a mass market product. Or is your product a niche market? Is it like that dart sharpener or that three D ruler we had? Is that a niche market? Or is your product a novelty market, um, uh, like a pet rock? So I tell every inventor when you come on and you invent your product, I want you to identify your market, okay? And identify one of those four. Which is yours? Which is what? What, what market do you you belong in because when you do that you have to then opens up different marketing channels all right the first two mass market and huge mass market well live shopping is great right uh, uh television is great radio is great right because otherwise because you otherwise you're spending too much money if you're in a niche market you want to do radio maybe facebook is great for a niche market maybe amazon amazon's <coughs> always great for a niche market that's a good idea steve orpel just said glad guides 126 million homes in us with furniture mass market yes i don't you know what? It might be huge mass market, Steve. Too. It's no. one of those. It's one of those things like Andrew just mentions that, that, that you're right. That's why I love you. And by the way, Steve, I think you're on Inventor Showdown season uh, two. So make sure Bonnie's getting in touch with you on that. So break down those four markets, and then then we'll consider what marketing channels that you can sell to when you're in one of those four markets. But that's our selling secrets segment. Hope that helped you guys. And always go to mycoolinventions.com. And if you're an inventor and you haven't submitted to our program, it doesn't cost anything, go to mycoolinventions.com, get on our show.